Hello everyone and welcome back to NL582 Modeling and Control of Electric Machines and Drives In the last lecture the Last time we were talking about the um, isolated mode of connecting synchronous generators to load okay so that means we have an isolated load okay that means it's, it's not connected to a grid and you are using one or more synchronous generators connected in parallel to provide the power the P and Q required for this load that is P load and Q load and the one or more generators used will just generate p generated and q generated to meet these load requirements okay we talked about this and how this actually uh, is working the last time especially we just talked about a very important two relationships the vq relationship okay and this gives you the idea of what happened actually when the Q generated increased in terms of its um, impact on the terminal voltage of the machine. And we said last time it just will look like that. So that means with the increase in the Q generated, the terminal voltage drops down. Okay? That's basically because what happens if the Q load goes up that means the Q generated has to go up also to meet these requirements of the load. That's how it happens, okay? This increase in Q, okay, is just coming from increase of the current, okay? An increase in the current will get you an increase over the voltage drop over the generator internal impedance, RA plus JXS. This voltage drop will go up also, okay? And this will bring down the terminal voltage. Why? Because basically the terminal voltage equals EA, the induced voltage inside the machine, multiplied by IA, RA plus JXS, yeah? They're all phasors, you know, because they're all sinusoidal values. So the whole point is, you know, this is the voltage drop over the impedance, RA plus JXS. So, IA goes up, that means V terminal goes down. Okay, but I don't like this to happen. So, how to mitigate this? Like we said last time. Now, get the action of the AVR, the automatic voltage regulator, which increases the voltage of the field winding, which increases the um, field current, which increases the magnetic field, which increases the internal induced MF this bring you the terminal voltage up again you're playing with this then use the mf okay and that is the action of the avr it just controls the flux excitation of the machine okay guys but to keep that in mind because that's important like we said last time is we are designing the machine actually to give the q full load the full load that means the rated load you are just trying to feed at the terminal voltage or at the rated terminal voltage. Okay? Hope you don't remember this point is EA because that is the no load. Okay? So we are designing our generator actually to have the full load Q at the rated value of the terminal voltage. So it shouldn't be a problem. But the problem actually is the opposite way around. Is that means the typical condition of the generator to work as it's working at this point which is that you are feeding the full load that means this should be the rated load you are trying to feed all the time and this is working at the terminal voltage of the generator to be rated value also so everything is set okay the real action that happens is what happened if this load now are reducing so you are just reducing everything or just it's all vice versa from now so that means the Q that wants to go to the load will just be reduced. 
that means the terminal voltage will increase and you will be reducing the field excitation to bring the terminal voltage back to its rated value otherwise it will be exceeding the rated value and it's not good it can damage the winding but it's more easier to understand it from this perspective is what's happening if it increases but to keep that in mind it's not a typical case of work the rated condition is the typical condition where the generator is working so the generator is designed to feed the rated Q at the rated terminal voltage okay and that's something that will happen that will face you in the real field is what happens if the Q requirement by the load went down and this will mean the terminal voltage will go up beyond the rated value so the ABR steps in to reduce the field of excitation to bring back the terminal voltage to its rated value okay guys and like we said last time is yeah you know this EA is the no load voltage that means when they increase from the no load to the full load you have a decrease in the terminal voltage by some um, ratio like we said last time we called that one the voltage regulation VR and this equals the no load voltage minus the full load voltage over the full load voltage multiplied by 100 and this gives you an indication of how much reduction you will have in the terminal voltage by the increasing of the loads from no load to full load okay I'm just revising this because that's important to just make these concepts solid the other very important relationship was the FP relationship okay yeah that's a little good sorry which is the relationship between the frequency of the generated voltage by this kind of a generator and its relationship sorry with the um, P generated and it's also having the same thing gone down like that okay this is the no load value F no load and that again the generator is designed to generate the rated value of the active power P at the F full load and this F full load is the rated value of the machine which is for here in North America is 60 Hertz okay so also the same thing what happens of P load goes up it increased the load requirements for active power increased that means your generated has your generator has to generate more active power to just accommodate for this increase in the load requirements okay and with the increase in the um, generated power that means the counter torque inside the machine will go up also with this and this will act as a brake on the machine and this will bring your mechanical speed down and because we are talking about a synchronous generator the mechanical speed is synchronized with the frequency that will mean that the frequency will go down like we said here or the increase in power supplied the frequency goes down also okay guys and again that's not something we can permit to happen that's why okay the governor steps in we call it the governor or the automatic voltage control okay and this controls the amount of input mechanical power so it increasing the mechanical power input which in turn will increase back the speed and this will bring you the frequency back up to its rated value again it's all gone the opposite way around in the real world because you're working at this point at the rated power at the rated frequency what happens is the load sometimes decrease and what's decreasing the other way around that happens the frequency the speed goes up and the frequency goes up with it and we cannot permit this to happen so the governor steps in to just reduce the mechanical power input to reduce the speed and bring back the frequency down to a traded value okay guys like just we said before this can be quantified by the value we call it SD speed drop again this equals the no load speed minus the full load speed divided by the full load speed multiplied by 100 or it did the same like F no load minus F full load over F full load 100 again it gives you an indication of how much the frequency and the speed of machine will be just 
um, affected when the load is just changing from no load to full load or from full load to no load, whatever you are just talking about. Okay, guys. Okay. And by the way, this relationship, so the slope of this line is a very important thing to have. We call it SP, the slope of the FP um, curve or line actually. Okay, so it is the slope of this FP line. Like any slope, it equals delta P over delta F. Okay. So this will give you like this from here if you lock up. So let me do it again here. That is the P. I'm oh, sorry, that is the F. And that is the P. And that is the relationship. Again, this value is the full loop power. And that is your zero P no load power. P no load or PF. This corresponding to the F full load. And this value is the F no load. So if you want the slope of this line, like here, it will be delta P over dot F. Delta P is P full load minus P no load over delta F, which is F full load minus F no load. Okay. Oh, or the other way around, because that is actually will be negative anyways. So to keep this positive, I will make it F no load minus F full load, because you know F no load is higher than F full load. P no load equals zero, because you're talking about no load power, which is basically zero. Okay. So this slope will be P full load divided by F no load minus F full load. Okay. So this slope like this is can be used to find just the power at any frequency just by having like this. So the P at any point will equal SP, which is the slope multiplied by F no load minus F full load. And this full load, F full load, most of the time we call it F system, which is the system frequency. Because the, that's the frequency you're working at most of the time. Okay. So that's it. If you know for any kind of a generator, if you just multiply this slope, you can now use that relationship directly. Okay. If you know the full load, the no load frequency and the system frequency, you can just work out how much power you are having now using this FP relationship. Okay, then they will be in watts shortly. Okay, guys. So that was our talking about the um, isolated mode of generation. So your generator is just connected to an isolated load. Okay. What does it mean? Is you can leave the voltage and frequency to just play around. Okay, as far as your load can handle it. Okay. So not all the loads are sensitive to the change in the voltage and the frequency. If you're talking about resistive loads, it should be okay. The voltage and the frequency can change from the rated value and it will not affect the load much. Okay? So in this case, you can leave this happening. Okay? Because we're talking again about a, uh, an isolated mode of operation. Okay? To just visualize what's happening with this kind, that is... Um, the synchronous machine page in the standalone mode from Doctrinalize Online Material. The link can be found on your detail page. I just printed to you. That is an interactive um, phasor diagram that you can use actually to just understand what's happening actually when you just play with different factors here. So as you see in here, the horizontal line, the black one is the terminal voltage, and the blue one is the E in the use voltage, and it is IA and IAXS and everything we had before in the phasor diagram. It just lets you know by pressing here increase IA and decrease RA you're seeing what's happening because you're talking about an isolated mode by increasing IA like you see the terminal voltage the black one goes shorter and shorter that means the terminal voltage is just going down and that's what we understand about this kind of machine. Increasing IA will increase the drop over the internal impedance of the generator or A plus JXS and this will bring down the terminal voltage. And vice versa, if you just decrease IA, 
like you're seeing here, terminal voltage goes up. Now, like you're seeing here, increasing IA like this will not just reduce V, okay, but it will increase the delta, the angle between the E and V, the power angle. And that makes sense because basically increasing IA is translated into increasing the power, and this comes with the increase in the power angle, okay. If I reset diagram, well, let's see here what happens if you increase E. How you increase E? By increasing the field, increasing the excitation. So if you increase E, like you see in here, the terminal voltage increases with it. Because it's just understood like that, okay? And everything is just kept constant like you've seen here, okay? Again, because all the time we are talking about an isolated mode, that means the terminal voltage is allowed to vary. If you leave it vary, of course. If you don't use an AVR to hold it back to its value. But what I'm having here is what happens if I just play with E using my AVR just to go anywhere, okay? So what happens actually with this is we are controlling E to restore back V. So I'm resetting this. What happens like here if you increased IA to some value so the terminal voltage comes down, in decreased like this. All happen is you are increasing E like this to restore back the terminal voltage to its uh, original one. But like you said, even when we increased here, the delta, the power angle already went up. Like we said before, as with all increase in the load, your delta goes up and up, and you cannot push it like that, because if you keep doing that, you'll bypass the, uh, or you'll pass the, your uh, um, limit, your stability limit, and the machine will go unstable. Okay? You can see it like this here. Okay, guys? Pushing this back. The same idea here if you're playing or just the load changes its case. To be more lagging or more leading, that means the nature of the load is changing, okay? So if it is more lagging, theta is going up, okay? Like you see here, the theta, the angle between I and V goes up, okay? Like you're just seeing here more and more. What's happening here more delta? It is the same, same idea I'm talking about. If you hold E constant like that, even the change in nature of the load, more lagging to more leading, like we just said before, is more lagging will reduce the terminal voltage even more. More leading will not have the same impact on the terminal voltage. Remember, like we said that before, as you're having a lagging load, more lagging load will cause the terminal voltage to drop more, while having leading load will have the reduction in the terminal voltage not as much. Okay, guys? So it is all the principles we talked about before, but you can see it like an interactive diagram here. So just have a look at it. It's fun to play around. Okay? Good. Now we're jumping to the other connection, which is mostly you'll be finding all over the place as the connected to grid mode. Connected to grid mode. Okay? So the grid can be just, we call it the infinite bus. Sometimes it's called the slack bus. If you had some sort of power system courses before, you should be familiar with these definitions. As we're now talking about the big grid, while there is many, many generators connected in parallel to feed loads over a large area okay so you have a public grid anywhere okay most of the places so for here in Alberta for example yeah we have a public grid on over Alberta so you have high number of generators they are all connected together to feed all the loads in Alberta so you cannot really tell which generator is really feeding your home right now it's because it's all like a connected a grid together okay each generating unit in all the grid is connected to a bus bar that's why we call it a bus okay but because we're talking about a big grid we call it an infinite bus okay what we mean is an infinite bus and why we call it like that because it's a very big powerful network 
okay so this network it is a very powerful network so that the increase or decrease of load does not affect the terminal voltage okay or let me call it the system voltage or frequency okay that means if you want to just plot this it will look like that the V or Q the terminal voltage V terminal and Q even if it's supplied or generated that means or it is um, supplied or generated you know or it's Q consumed whatever you have an increase in this or increase and in both ways the terminal voltage stays constant so the increase or reduce in Q will not affect the terminal voltage it will be all the time at the rated value of your system frequency or system voltage sorry okay the same thing if you are talking about the P so while it's P supplied or P consumed also with the frequency of the system so that is F of the system the system frequency will just remain constant at its rated value that's what I'm saying you're talking about that because they are old that's many many generators are connected together they are really forming big powerful network those minor changes in the load will not really impact the system you're talking all the time about all the managed changes but if you had in your power system courses they are just having some sort of stability um, studies but yeah, sometimes if you have a major problem that a major transmission line has been tripped because of a fault or a major big generator has just went out, went down because of also it has a problem. If this generator, this grid, it's not as powerful as it's been expected, you could have some sort of stability issues and this network will may start to collapse. Okay, so it's different. You have to refer to like what we call the grid codes for each grid for this to give you that how actually you can describe this grid to be as powerful and most of the time it will be something like you can say that's a stable grid and powerful grid that it can withstand the outage of a single big generator so even if the whole generator is went out of the grid unplanned the grid can still handle this without collapsing and it's also it can handle the loss of a major transmission line okay again the grid can handle this if the grid can handle this that's now a powerful network and that's what we're talking about here yeah there is no immune network if you want to call it that because yeah if you just have two or three big generators went down at the same time the grid will collapse okay but we're talking about the realistic problems that can happen okay so if it is a big powerful network powerful grid it can actually uh, deal with those changes with those problems with their casualties and just remain stable and remain supplying power to the loads those kind of networks we're talking about here is it's a powerful network so that's why we call it an infinite bus or a slag bus that can just deal with all the changes in the p and q um, chain uh, pq of whatever it's supplied or consumed supplied by the generators or consumed by the loads so this can change and this can change but the terminal voltage and frequency will remain constant irrespective of this change okay guys again it's all coming from all the controllers you are placing in time okay the avr is used to control reactive power generated up and down to control the terminal voltage VT up 
and down respectively okay to keep it at rated value okay the same idea happens with the other controller which is called the automatic generation control or the governor is used to control the mechanical power p mechanical input of the generator up and down to control the frequency up and down respectively to keep it at rated value okay guys so that happens for each generator okay each generation has its own AVR and its own governor that can just keep this happening all the time without having a problem okay but we're talking now about so many mini generators are connected together at the same time so they are just together are forming a very big powerful network okay so um, slight increase or decrease in the Q of each generator or the slight increase or decrease of the Q or P of the load will not affect the terminal voltage or the frequency of the whole system because you know the network is powerful than the individual generators okay that's what I'm saying about of how really happens here if we're talking about this so if we bend back here to the uh, material like we said that was our standalone operation phase of diagram uh, like I said here the increase or decrease in the current and that means increase or decrease in P or Q like we said before that will directly affect the terminal voltage the increase in the current will decrease the terminal voltage like that the decrease in the terminal of the, on the current will increase the terminal voltage so the terminal voltage of the machine directly affected by the change in the current which all the time simulated by change in the reactive power and Q and that's why we have this VQ relationship and to mitigate this we have to have our AVR working all the time to control E up and down to restore back the terminal voltage to its previous value okay now let's go and have a look at the parallel operation and lock at what we call um, the same idea but with um, the infinite pass operation okay so that's here we are talking about a generator connected to the um, infinite bus connected to the grid okay guys look at this that the same phase of diagram we talked about before but the whole point is while connected to the grid your terminal voltage will be kept constant the network like we said is more powerful than you so your terminal voltage the terminal voltage generator will be kept constant at the system voltage at the rated voltage of the whole system whatever you are trying to change okay so if you increase the P like we are trying to do here or reduce it so like here we are now working at the rated P at the rated power so the machine is just supplying its maximum limit its rated power that can supply it's not the maximum actually it can supply slightly larger than this power but it's not the rated value like we said before the rated value is the value that the machine can keep generating all the time without having a problem okay so for this instance the machine is just generating its rated power what happens if we're trying to decrease this P if we're trying to decrease the load like we've seen here this decrease in the P is not affecting the voltage see that voltage the black horizontal line it's not affected by the change in the P while it's up or down again because the terminal voltage is held constant at the system voltage it cannot be changing because the network is so powerful it's an infinite uh, network it is yeah it's an infinite bus so the terminal voltage is just constant like we've seen here rather the increase and decrease in P is just directly affecting the theta see what's happening I'm here increasing P increasing the generated power 
I will be now like I'm saying here so that will be decrease in P now P is very small like I'm seeing here if I'm trying to increase P the theta will be changing the angle between the the terminal voltage and the current that being the power factor of the generator will be changing okay guys keep that in mind so what's very um, straightforward in our minds is the power factor is just related to the load so the, the load changing like sort of its power factor so the generator power factor will be changing but it's not here because we're talking about a synchronous generator that you can actually play with its excitation you can control the amount of excitation inside the machine okay guys so that means you can control the power factor of the machine because you can control the excitation of it and this will control the amount of reactive power that can go out and that's what determines the power factor okay so the power factor is determined by if this load is needing reactive power so it's a lagging power factor load or it can give reactive power so it will be leading power factor and the same idea about generator the reactive power coming from the excitation so if you have excess excitation so you have excess reactive power to give if your excitation is not high enough okay that means sometimes even you need reactive power from the grid okay so we can control the excitation so what's happening here is the increase or decrease in p like you've seen here will change the power factor and change the angle delta which is the power angle obviously okay the same idea we're talking about e now if i'm increasing e just saying here i'm decreasing e okay again thermal voltage is kept constant like you've seen here so i'm decreasing e the decrease in e will decrease the excitation and that means that's a decrease in the reactive power of the machine and this will keep your current more less lagging less lagging that's before that means that the generator is not having enough reactive power okay unless until you just go beyond here and now the current is now leading that means the generator actually is taking reactive power from the grid because its own excitation is very small and it cannot even build the required reactive power for the generator itself okay guys so that what's happening if you're connected to a grid the thermal voltage is kept constant and the increase or decrease in the excitation which is controlling the reactive power or the increase and reduce in the p which is coming from the mechanical system is basically playing with the angle delta which is the power angle and the power factor of the machine okay guys so the increase in p is coming on decrease in p coming from decrease of the mechanical power coming from the mechanical source or the generator so like you've seen here i'm decreasing p and this coming with the decrease in the power angle it makes sense this is related to the power so decreasing the power will decrease the power angle but at the same time the angle theta will go higher and higher and that means it's more and more lagging okay because now decreasing power decreasing power that means all of your power now is just going to be reactive but what happens if you're playing with e playing with e means we are just using the avr to control the excitation and the excitation of the field is playing with the reactive power so the machine has to build some amount of magnetic field okay actually to be generating the rated voltage you want okay but what happens if you're just trying to decrease this excitation that means you're decreasing the amount of reactive power generated inside the machine okay and this will make your current less and less lagging you keep doing this unless you be leading that means you are not having enough excitation to actually um, be good for the machine and now the machine even having reactive power from the grid that means from other generators connected parallel with it to build its own magnetic field to be able to generate the required terminal voltage so the whole point of this guys we're talking about what means about the difference between this and this okay that's why even your lab will be having this idea you will be having a connected to grid experiments that you have in the synchronous generator connected to grid and you now play with the power the p and the excitation and see how the um, power factor of the machine is affected
Okay, guys. Okay. So to better understand this reactive power um, issue of the machine, or how actually can you really affecting this, the power factor of the generator is affected by this, by the reactive power, is should be noted like that. So I'm going to talk about the Q, the reactive power, for a second. Okay, so the reactive power inside the generator Okay, is coming from the excitation. Okay, what I mean by excitation, it is the excitation of the field winding. Okay, the creation of the magnetic field. Okay, so that's how you understand this. The generator have some sort, so that is our generator, and it should have some amount of reactive power. Just stay with this reactive power Q as some sort of reactive power reservoir. Okay, so you're having enough excitation inside the generator to build its own magnetic field and keep the terminal voltage of the machine at its rated value. That's happening, look at it, maybe at no load. You're not having any load now. But what happens if you have now a load? That requires Q, Q of the load. The load requires some reactive power. So it starts taking from your reservoir, from the reservoir of the generator, okay? So what happens? Your terminal voltage will start dropping because this limit of the Q inside the generator will start dropping down like this. Okay? In an isolated mode, what happens is just really this really happens is with the increase in the Q of the load, it takes from your Q inside the generator that comes from the excitation and the terminal voltage drops. So you're using the AVR. The AVR steps in to increase again Q to increase the excitation that means ex increasing again the Q reservoir inside the machine to give it back to its previous limit and this bring you the terminal voltage up again okay guys that's the whole point is you have to be just have a certain amount of Q inside your machine inside your generator synchronous generator to build its own magnetic field and keep the rated voltage or the voltage of the machine at its rated condition. If you start having a load that draws some of this reactive power out of the generator, you have to push your excitation up again to give more reactive power to the generator, give more excitation to build more reactive power inside the machine to keep the terminal voltage constant here. Okay? That's all point I'm talking about. What happens if this doesn't happen? It's not, you cannot increase the excitation for some sort of any reason, okay? You have a problem with the field winding, something like that, okay? It's not a typical condition, but just for the sake of argument. If you cannot increase back the excitation, the thermal voltage will drop down, like we said. We have to push back excitation to keep the rated voltage up again. But if you're talking about a generator connected to a grid, the terminal voltage cannot be played with. It has to be kept constant at the grid voltage. So what's happening is just even if the load increases and you have to push more Q, and if you don't have your own excitation to just compensate for this, you will start taking it from the grid. What I mean by taking it from the grid? Taking it from other generators connected to the grid to push back again or to fill your own reservoir to keep the terminal voltage constant here at the rated value. That's what I'm saying, okay? So what's happening is, normally, if you have normal excitation, normal E, your generator will be lagging power factor. A lagging power factor for the generator is the opposite way with the load. If your load is lagging power factor, that means the load requires Q, takes Q. But lagging power factor for the generator means it's actually giving Q, okay, to load. That means you have excess Q inside the machine, so you have your own excitation to build the amount of Q you want to keep your own magnetic field at its rated value, to keep the terminal voltage at its rated value, and the excess Q starts going to the load, and that's the typical synchronous generator. But what happens if you cannot generate enough E? 
okay? What happens if you cannot generate enough E for some reason? You cannot generate enough excitation to the field winding, okay? And the load keeps taking, so your E is just at very low level. And you still have loads that take in power, take reactive power, okay? That means you will not have enough excitation, enough Q inside the machine to build your own magnetic field that keeps the terminal voltage at its rated value. And that means you are now taking reactive power Q from the grid. Okay, guys? And taking reactive power like this means now you will have leading power factor. Again, it's the opposite to the load. If the load giving Q, that means it's leading, but for the generator, if it is taking Q, that will be leading power factor. Okay, guys? That's why that I'm saying is, if you control the excitation of a generator while connected to the grid, you will be controlling the power factor because you're controlling the amount of reactive power exchange. Okay? How much reactive power you have inside the machine or how much you're giving to the grid. So the same idea with the P, like we said before when we just looked at the interactive phasor diagram. Okay, guys? Again, that's why, because it's a connected to grid and it's a powerful grid and the grid keeps the thermal voltage and the frequency constant at the rated value. Okay? So if you don't have your own resources, the grid will start feeding you. And this cannot permit it to happen in a regular ways, okay? So if you're in a regular operation, you, your synchron generator have to keep all the time generating P and Q and give it to the grid because it's why it's built actually, yeah? It's not built to take P or Q from the grid, okay guys? All the time it has to generate P, but if you're not generating enough Q to build your own magnetic field, you'll start taking it from the grid. So rather than being generating Q to the grid, you'll be just taking Q from the grid. Again, because it's a powerful grid and it has to keep the terminal voltage constant in its rated value. So if you don't have your own enough Q, the grid will give it to you. And it's not something desirable, okay? But this is how the physics of this and the engineering work. Okay, guys? Again, all the time because we're talking about the other connection, which is the infinite bus connection, the connection to a powerful grid. Okay, guys? Speaking of which, how actually you can connect those generators together? So that's a very big question to ask yourself. How, or let me say the conditions required to connect two or more generators i'm talking here about synchron generators of course in parallel or connecting a generator to the grid to the same principle because the grid is basically means you're having uh, one or more generators connected in parallel so that's the whole point if these conditions what you need to the conditions you need to meet in order to connect two or more generators in parallel or even connecting a generator to the grid okay guys the whole point is the voltage waveform of the generator must be identical to the voltage waveform of the other generators. Why? To prevent circulating <coughs> current which could be damaging okay so the whole point is I'm having here a generator and I need to connect another one in parallel with it okay either if you are feeding a load in isolated mode or even connecting them to the grids whatever it is okay 
So if you have at any instant of time a difference between the voltages of those two generators because they will be connected together at the same point, if you have any difference in the voltage, you will start having circulating current moving between those two generators and not going to the load. And this circulating current could damage the generator. So the whole point is, if you having the voltage waveform of one generator of generator one, some kind of generator one like this, so the other one should be identical to it like this in time. The same current generator two, okay? Here about talking with time, that is the voltage, terminal voltage of the machine. Okay, guys? How to meet this, so that's the condition. So to make sure that's happening, here are the conditions. Number one, connect the two or more generators at the same phase sequence. What I mean by phase sequence? You know, there are three phases, yeah? So, one of them is A, B, C. The other one has to be also A, B, C. That means, because like here, we're just having, like we are having those single phase generators. But the actual case is each generator is three phase winding, yeah? So, if this is the first generator, it will be having three phases, terminals like this. And that is the other one. That is one, that is two. So if this A, B, C, and this A, B, C, that means you have to connect A from here to A there, B from here to B there, C from this to C there, okay? You cannot connect a B from here, for example, with a C from there. That means they will not be identical, because you know, from the three phases, you have a phase shift of 120 degrees. So I cannot connect a B from one of them to a C from the other one or A from one of them to B from the other one because they will not be identical. The waveforms will not be identical. That means you will have, and um, yeah, at a certain times or just from a moment to a moment, you will be having a uh, difference in the voltage. And that means they cannot be connected at the same point, parallel together. Otherwise, you will be have a damaging circulating current. So the first one to make sure your waveforms are identical to make sure to be connecting them at the same phase sequence. Okay. Condition number two, the voltage magnitudes are equal. And that makes sense. If you have the voltage of the generator one is just like this, the other one must be having the same magnitude okay this one equal to this one the magnitude okay and that means it has to be also the rms value so they're all the same so the two waveforms the two voltages of the two generators has to be the same you can check this if you have two generators so how to check actually the phase sequence of the two generators it can be checked visually if you just can distinguish all those usually it's just written on the terminal box that's a that's b that's c okay if it's not written so you use um, if you are talking about a lab you're basically you can use an oscilloscope just to look at the voltages of each one of them and make sure they are identical okay and um a typical um, power plant, they have um, a device just dedicated for this. We call it a synchronoscope. That is make sure they are just synchronized together and make sure they are just having the same thing. So this one can be checked visually, the same sequence. The voltage magnitude can be checked with the voltmeters. So if you have just the voltmeter connecting to the voltage or measuring the voltage of this one, another one measuring the voltage of the other one, you can make sure they are just constant. They are just sorry uh, equal okay number three the voltage phase angle are equal must be equal what i mean by this 
is you cannot have generator one waveform like this here the phase angle is zero why because the, the starting of the sine wave starts with zero okay and the other one the other generator the voltage is just like this why because if you see in here you have a phase angle okay so phase angle here does not equal zero so they are not identical so make sure the voltage phase angle or the phase angle between the, the each voltage of those are just equal okay again all that we need to have this thing that the two voltage waveforms of the all or the voltage waveforms of all the generators you want to connect in parallel it all has to be identical okay so keep the sequence the same sequence keep the magnitude the same magnitude keep the angle the phase angle the same and last but not least the two or more generators must be at the same frequency so you cannot have different frequencies in the voltage okay so the voltage has to be at the same frequency so the voltages has to be the same magnitude the same angle the same frequency and the same sequence otherwise you will have a phase difference sorry uh, you'll have a voltage difference between them one from another okay guys so if this one is 60 hertz the other one has to be 60 hertz 50 hertz the other one has to be 50 hertz okay but i'll leave you with a hint here if you are connecting a generator to grid yeah make the frequency of the generator the same as the frequency of the grid but make the frequency of the generator slightly higher than the frequency of the grid or the system frequency okay why if you return back to the equation we start with p means the slope multiplied of f no load minus f system yeah so the frequency is the same thing if you are talking about the frequency of a generator so this is corresponding to the frequency of the generator and this is the frequency of the grid okay so this one has to be slightly higher than this one to keep this p positive positive means the power is just flowing from the generator to the grid just to make sure that the generator will actually be generating to the grid not acting like a motor taking power from the grid it cannot be permitted okay so yeah usually we have the frequency the same but you just make it a very very slight better higher than the frequency of the system just to make sure the power is basically going from the generator to the grid but once they are connected together the grid is powerful enough and it will hold the frequency of the generator back to the system frequency but at the connecting instance just make sure to have this very slight difference between them okay guys so there are all the conditions needed to connect two generators in parallel or connecting one generator parallel with the grid they are all just translating to make sure the voltage waveform of both of them are just identical like this to make sure there will not be voltage difference between them at any instance to keep any circulating current moving inside damaging the machine okay guys that's it yeah thanks so much for joining me today and i hope to see you next time